Man in Line with Andy Wint. to my good afternoon welcome to man in line on max radio open line through till one o'clock today so if you have something on your mind whatever you want to talk about maybe you've been listening to um, our politicians in action this morning then by all means get in touch could be anything else whatever you want to talk about frivolous or world shattering then get in touch Text, email, call and WhatsApp and uh, so many messages I didn't manage to get to yesterday and some interesting ones uh, regarding, uh, do you remember we, yesterday we were talking about, well, the future of uh, Department for Infrastructure, what we have to do and exactly what will the relationship between the politicians, uh, the people who back them up within the civil service, and us, the voters, the constituents. Hmm. I thought it was a total mess the electricity board got into. The government would, would have had a better hold on the purse strings. Uh, the government spending at the moment is disgraceful, says June. And uh, C on 885 said, I agree with Howard and Viv yesterday. I think we should name the civil servants responsible. And it's time for Alf to sort this lot out or step down if he can't rein in extravagance. Um, uh, well, I'm sure the Chief Minister, Mr. Cannon, is aware of that. He was Treasury Minister under the Quail administration, a backbencher previous to that, but he has served in Comen before and now as Chief Minister. Well, you'll actually get the chance to have a chat with the Chief Minister. A week today, next Tuesday, the 25th, the Chief Minister is going to be live on Man in Line, so you can put questions to him in person and just see uh, how he sees the future. He's got um, a lot on his plate at the moment. Uh, not only is he chief minister, he's also infrastructure minister at the same time. Uh, the question's got to be asked. Oh, and regarding uh, the senior civil servants, th their names are in the public domain. If you want to go to any uh, government department, you can go to the government website, go to gov.im and find the department. The names of the heads of the department are all there. They're all in the public domain. I'm not going to name them, um, but um, b just for the sake of it, anyway. But their names are there, so we, we do know who is at the head of uh, the departments. Uh, the question must be asked with regards to the Liverpool terminal, says John in Farm Hill. Who was responsible for the original agreement? And why didn't it contain some sort of clause in respect to any increase in costs? Because at the moment it just seems to be open-ended. For once, I would have welcomed um, Sherwood back. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sherwood, yes, the previous owner of, uh, of sea containers. Uh, because when Liverpool tried to get the steam packet to pay for work at the pier here, pier head, he told them to, um, uh, well, anyway, he went to the port he already owned in Hesham, uh, says uh, John in Farm Hill. Uh, well, we are where we are. What happened in the past with previous owners of the steam packet? It's, uh, and it is always tempting to go back into the bus and say, well, you know, this should have happened and that should have happened. Well, that succeeds in doing one basic thing, which is taking up time and effort. So we can either rehash the past and try and, you know, find victims or uh, we can find um, uh, malevolence in the past. Or we move forward. And really, time only does go one way. So it's up to you. I mean, if you think it's it's worth rehashing the past and finding out who did what and to whom, or do we just move forward to the future? Anyway, uh, Elizabeth's first on today. Hi, Elizabeth. Good afternoon. Now, I just wanted to know, could anybody tell me why 
this Manx man is not carrying passengers at the moment. It's not doing any runs. No, well, she doesn't I mean, come on stream, I think, until the end of this month. They're doing sea trials at the moment, just going in and out of Douglas and in and out of Hesham just to see, you know, because she is wider. She's apparently one one articulated truck wider each side. So it's a, I'm not saying it's a squeeze, but they, they have to know what they're doing to get in and out of the harbours. But I thought I heard somebody say this. It didn't. It didn't marry up with the. Uh, you know, when they let the thing down, it didn't marry up with it because it was so wide. Well, I, I would have hoped they'd have sorted that out beforehand, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. I just thought. I wondered. It's been here now a while, and it hasn't did any passenger transfers. You no, know? it's just. I think they're doing crew training and just making sure that when they do open the door to to vehicles and passengers, that everything is as it should be. I mean, it looks luxurious inside. I know. Can you imagine when it gets to these uh, bikers come on with their dirty trousers and sit on those lovely white seats? <laughs> They're not going to bike for long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they've got a vax in there somewhere. Okay. All right. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Good to hear from you. Well, she's not. Uh, they've not actually said when the first sailing is going to be. So if you are booked on a, on a, a Manxman sailing towards the end of this month, can you tell me when it is? If you're going to be sailing, I. I mean, I've not been, I'm not on the, in with the in crowd where that's concerned. Uh, there have been some people on the radio station who have been invited on board to have a look around, and they tell me it is very, very plush inside. So we'll, um, we'll see where we go with that. So, but if you are on board, uh, if it's in the near future, and if you've got a, a trip um, uh, planned, then by all means, uh, we need a referendum required on future energy production, whether the chief minister uh, will be voted for by the public. The voice of the people needs to be heard, says Ian. Well, we have one every few years. We have the House of Keys general election. We're not really known for referendum. Of course, the captain of the parish can, uh, can call um, requisition meetings uh, but that's another process to go through and well I mean if you want me to put questions to the Chief Minister next Tuesday I am more than happy I prefer it if you put the questions to him yourself but if you want to question your question uh, given to the Chief Minister next Tuesday by all means just get in touch email studio at manxradio.com or out of hours man in line at manxradio.com you can leave a message on the answer phone on 682631 or you can WhatsApp the message uh, and I'll put it to the Chief Minister next Tuesday. He is on Man in Line next Tuesday and uh, as I mentioned, he does have a lot on his plate, more on his plate than he would have had on Friday as the Department for Infrastructure Minister departed uh, yesterday from the role that is. Uh, Vernon's on now. Hi, Vernon. Good morning, Andy. Nice to hear from you. Um, just about the site where the new terminal is in Liverpool. Prince's uh, Half Tide Dock, yeah. Yeah, we we came across uh, back from Liverpool about a week ago, which was on Sunday actually, and um, we took time to go down and have a look where it was and about it. And all I can say is that the land around it looks like a 1943 bomb site. Uh, well, fun, fun, funny you should say that, Vernon. I did exactly the same thing. I came back on the boat uh, last yes. Tuesday night, it was, and took, uh, took the opportunity, uh, as they hadn't opened the, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the barrier to where you could drive in uh, to wait. Yeah. I, I drove around there. Now, on the one side, you're quite right, on the one side, you have kind of, as you say, 1940s bombed out uh, b basins. And on the other side, you've got these very chic apartments and flats and tower blocks. Oh, looking out onto it. Yes, you have. You're quite right. You've also got Costco there, too. <laughs> uh, but what's interesting, and, and nothing's been said, but uh, it strikes me as a long way to walk. If you're coming off the boat, it's a, it's a lot further than the, where the current pier head is. Normally, you could just leap out of the pier head and you'd be in Liverpool 1, or you could stride up to Liverpool Lime Street. This is a good half mile further down, I think. Oh, easily, easily. So what's going to happen to people who, you know, I mean, they've not said anything. There's, uh, when when the Ben McCree used to go to Birkenhead, there was a free bus. 
Uh, but it wasn't yeah, a very chic. It wasn't a very chic bus, but it took you from Birkenhead, Twelve Keys, to uh, yeah. Lime Street and into town. Yeah, well, I think with the extra cost, the, the government are going to have to pay for the sea terminal. I can't see that you get a free bus ride down to the terminal. Well, it wouldn't. Uh, put it this way: the extra ten millions, you could have a free bus for twenty years, and you still wouldn't come anywhere near ten million pounds. Yeah, sure. Could have even an electric bus, couldn't you? Yes, maybe so. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, uh, right. well, it's not going to be until next year when the first boats are going in there. And obviously the, the Manxman won't be able to carry freight because they're not allowing that there. And it can't operate after half past 11 at night. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? Buying a new boat, £18 million, whatever it was, £70 million. Pounds. And then you can't get the freight put on at Liverpool. Crazy. Mm. OK, thanks, Vernon. Bye. All right, 17 minutes past 12. Uh, regarding the Liverpool landing stage, we haven't again. We haven't had a firm date, and uh, I'm sure the uh, it, it's kind of de facto the interim de- minister for infrastructure will be able to give us one next Tuesday. Perhaps we should ask him when it's actually going to be open, and what's going to happen to the people who are foot passengers who will have to walk a lot further than they do at the moment. Getting off in uh, the pier head at the moment, you're right underneath the Liver building, you are a hop, skip and a jump away from Albert Dock, where this one is in Princess Half Tide Dock, it is a lot further down. I just wonder what the implications are for people who with have got restricted mobility. What's going to happen if there's going to be a public transport interface for the boats? I feel one of the biggest problems, says Ali, regarding capital projects and priorities where these are concerned, it isn't necessarily incompetence, but more likely being incapable of procuring the right people to carry out the contracts owing to little or no experience themselves. This then allows the various departments and CEOs to be taken advantage of, thus huge over-expenditure for the taxpayer, allowing, well, you know, the big companies, and Peel Group is one of those big companies, to laugh all the way to the bank. And, well, let's put this in context. Uh, The Peel Group is what it is. It's a highly successful property uh, property developer and infrastructure. I mean, they've got... Uh, solar solar farms, they've got wind farms. There's a big one. If you fly into Liverpool Airport, you'll see Frodsham. You fly over a Peel Group wind farm, and they've got a solar farm there as well. So we can expect business to do what business does. They will always act in the interests of their shareholders. That's what they're there for. In fact, if you do the opposite, you contravene the Companies Act. So they will do what they do. The fact that we, perhaps, as a, a government, as an infrastructure, aren't capable of negotiating on the same terms with those. Now, remember, the Chief Minister, now Treasury Minister, as he was, negotiated the purchase of the steam packet, which, with the benefit of hindsight, has been seen to be very timely for us. In fact, perhaps uh, it saved our bacon during COVID if we hadn't own the steam packet. Can you imagine the hold that any commercial operator would have had over us regarding uh, provisions and stocking the Isle of Man? So we own the steam packet and the government bought the steam packet. Retrospect, good thing to do. It's ours now. We can do that. So Chris with us now. Hi, Chris. How are you doing, Andy? OK? Good, thanks. Yeah, just an input on the last call. The, the existing foot passenger exit of the terminal to the new one is actually about 200 metres. I live there and work there and take this journey regularly. There's a bridge behind what is the west. Your signal's gone, Chris. Are you there? 200 metres. Thank you, Chris. Sorry about that. Your signal's disappeared. Uh, I don't know where he was. He wasn't walking there. It felt a lot more to me, to be quite honest. I don't know whether that's 200 metres as the crow flies, uh, but it looked a lot more than 200 metres is 200 paces, and some of it is cobbles. 
they put some cobble effect on there. But anyway, if uh, somebody must have a drone uh, shot of that or so. Um, Howard Quayle was the chief minister at the start of the ferry terminal fiasco. Perhaps uh, Mr Quayle would answer a few questions, says Texto425. Three and a half million pounds was for the purchase of the land, says that. Well, that was the original price that was uh, quoted. Uh, Princess Half Tide Dock, they said three and a half million pounds. It's a lease, isn't it? 990 year lease that they've got on the land there. Uh, still, to be quite honest, <laughs> it's gone up a bit. Let's just say it's not just inflation that's uh, risen the price of the, the ferry terminal in Liverpool. Something somewhere has gone wrong. Let's face it. Mark on now. Hi, Mark. Hello there. Just a quick one for you. Potentially controversial. Um, as a taxpayer, yes, like many, I'm a little upset about the amount of money being spent in Liverpool. However, food for thought, deal, the people that own um, the ports where we're spending all this money are also the same people trying to invest in building a science park at Cool Roundabout on the Isle of Man. And and, and, a, and a, solar a solar park, park in, in exactly. Milan. Yeah. So whilst we're contributing to their business and investing in beautifying their landscape over, if you want to call it that, in Liverpool docks, they're also trying to invest in us here. But we're kind of stopping them as an island, be that planning, be it whatever, whatever, whatever. Just food for thought, you know. Um, it's not as if it's a big conglomerate that's trying to hoover up all our cash. They're trying to reinvest it here for us, and we're stopping them. Well, I think the, the planning decision on the solar farm, which I think is around uh, Bilown, it's actually around Mr Whitaker's home in, in uh, Bilown, and the one that the, the cannabis farm that's going to be by the Cool Road, I think it's September that that comes out. So we don't know that it's been knocked back, but apparently everything is ready to go on both projects. Well, fingers crossed. Let's hope so. I mean, I've, I've got to say, I've got nothing to do with the organisation, the company itself. However, it is frustrating to know that it's taken so long for us as an island to get our, you know, um, get ourselves, get our act together and say, yeah, let's plow on with this. You know, the government says, with, on the one hand, let's do renewables, let's embrace cannabis, but on the other hand, well. And, you know, government department, be it planning or whatever, is saying, slow down, hold up. We don't know if we can do it. So I wonder where the hold up is. <laughs> you and me both. Uh, it could be NIMBY, you know, not in my backyard. Could be anything. I don't honestly know. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's all well and good for us for complaining about our civil servants or whoever that negotiated the issue with a company as being poor negotiators. But we also seem to be pretty poor at enabling investment, inward investment. Interesting. OK, well, maybe that's something I'll, I'll bring up with the chief minister next Tuesday. Please do. OK, right. thanks for that. Thanks, Good to Mark. hear from you. Mark. Thanks, uh, Mark. I think Chris is back now. Chris, are you back? Yeah, how are you doing? Sorry. Your signal disappeared. Yeah, it did. It did. They still haven't fixed that on the island. Um, so you were saying no, the, you reckon it's 200 metres from Prince's Half Tide Dock to where the current link span is? Where the current um, where the current foot passengers walk up the ramp and exit the boat right. after they collect their bags to the, to the bridge that they go to, which is right outside the new terminal, is 200 metres. It must be me then. It looked a lot more when I looked at it last week. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, I uh, I would walk the loop regularly, and I've and I've, I've tracked it on my watch, and it's it, it's two 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 hundred and thirteen meters or something like that. It, it's really not that far. Um, what people haven't realised is there is a bridge behind an existing building that's there yeah. that links the new terminal to the existing land. You don't have to go out and out round by Costco to come back round. So is the, this is the bridge? And it's right next to that really tall block of posh flats. Is it there? Yeah, on the gra on the ground floor, there's a restaurant restaurant called Cargo. Um, I'm sure it's Cargo, and and behind it there is a there is a bridge that takes you straight to the terminal. Okay, all right, that's great. Thanks for clearing that up. 
No problem. Good to hear from you. 26 minutes past 12. Uh, my brother's going over uh, by boat on Friday, and the ticket shows the booking is the Manxman. So is it this Friday? Sue, thank you for that. So uh, she must be out and about. I love uh, for Man in Line to be on for two hours. <laughs> oh, Lord, crikey. Oh, don't you like me? I'm concerned because uh, Waterworld Sulby, the Bird and Wildlife Reserve, has been drained and the birds aren't coming as they usually do while migrating and the wallabies and other creatures are being driven out too. My friends and I have been on to death from, we've been passed from pillar to post. It's the Currucks Field 131302. 131302. Um, do you know anybody we can talk to regarding this environmental damage? This is uh, Field 131302, which uh, Crystal says has been drained. It's not right. We're promoting wildlife, global green, and government have let this happen. Yeah, they want to stop folk camping at the airs because of the birds. Didn't know that, Crystal. Thanks for cluing us in on that. And we're still getting messages in regarding the wallabies. Uh, it's a split, really. I would say slightly more than 50-50. It's about sort of 55-45 regarding the wallabies. I won't tell you which way because I don't want to influence what you have to say regarding the wallabies. Some people are saying the wallabies aren't a native species and that uh, they are the wallabies came from just one couple so will be inbred and will have their own problems. Also saying that w the wallabies don't have a natural predator on the Isle of Man. So what they do do is eat young trees. Other people say the wallabies, having wallabies here, is a good idea. It, it uh, widens the wildlife offering, and it's fun. Lots of people say that having wallabies here is fun. It's something different. And also having a wallaby population over here and not being a, a wallaby geneticist, I don't know the implications of having inbred wallabies. But if you have anything to say regarding the wallabies, we'll probably be talking about this and more uh, maybe at the Royal Show, because Man in Line's going to be live at the Royal Show, but also maybe beforehand. If you're driving over the mountain, says Anne on 090, uh, there is a, I'll clean this up, there's an idiot of a cyclist all in black with no lights on in thick fog. So if you're over the mountain, do keep your eyes open for a cyclist dressed in black, by all means. And uh, it's unlikely you're that cyclist dressed in black, but if it is you, get some high vis on. Do you think the delay on Peel Holding Project coincides with the relaxation of the work permits? Well, the Peel Holding, the two projects they've got, which are the cannabis farm on the cool road and the solar farm which is going to be around Bilown. I was interested when it was it Crystal Mark said it that the the, uh, the NIMBY the NIMBY side of having a solar farm. Well actually it's Mr Whitaker's back garden, so it is in his back garden. Anyway, we'll see. And I think the cannabis farm is not for growing cannabis bush or cannabis leaf, it's for cannabis oil. I think the problem they're going to have is actually getting rid of the cannabis leaf and bush because um, they don't want it. They want the highly, highly valuable uh, cannabis oil, the cannabinoids out of that. Anyway, we'll find out more when they get the planning answer later on this year. Uh, will we get the horse tram finished now that uh, Chris Thomas has left the door, uh, says uh, Bill? We don't know. Again, something possibly I can put to the chief minister next year. Uh, and don't forget as well, everybody's reminding me to tell you that tonight at six o'clock, Mike Buttle is on with a special steam railway programme. I keep getting to get an answer, trying to get an answer to something. I seem to remember Peel Ports offered to build a new terminal as part of the plan to get the steam packet to move. If that was the case, why was it turned down, says Jill in Onkham. Anything else you want to talk about? Now, um, they were talking about sex education. 
this morning. Um, Jason Morehouse from Arby Castle Town in Malou put a question in to the Education, Sport and Culture Minister, Julie Edge, for an update on the progress at the Tinwall sitting today. Uh, he said he'd be surprised if a report into the relationship and sex education curriculum is ready for the start of the new academic year, which is the uh, first week of September. Of course, the advisory curriculum was suspended earlier this year following concerns from parents over the nature of the material being used in the this relationship and sex education curriculum. Phase two of the report into the relationship and sex education curriculum is going to be published actually later this week. On the 21st, on Friday, the Education Minister, Julie Edge, MHK, gave an update this morning. I do feel that I need to, to reiterate the importance of, with regards to the terms of reference and the purpose of writing a terms of reference for any investigation. Um, and the Honourable Member is correct that Part 2 will be complete by the end of the school term, which is the 21st of July, and Phase 3 will then consider, in light of any of the outcome of the phase two, <coughs> any changes that may be required. And it's always been recognised by the department and by the current investigative team that phase three would require specialist expertise. However, until phase two of the report is seen, we wouldn't wish to second-guess the outcome. Whilst this process has taken time, it's important that the process is thorough and all views of stakeholders is heard and taken into consideration. With regards to um, our PHSE curriculum, that will be timetabled from September. And um, as the Honourable Member will know, at this point, I would expect that none RSE elements will be delivered, which will allow us to have that consideration of the next steps and further work required following phase two. However, the PSHE programme will be delivered and continued in our schools in September. There she was, uh, Juliet MHK in Tinwell this morning. We watch and uh, we wait to see what happens there. Do people realise that for the cost of the Liverpool White Elephant, they could have got another Manxman with a couple of million left over, which they could have given to me, says John in Farm hill well at least he's declaring his interest if we well we have to move that's the point we have to move from liverpool because liverpool city council want to put cruise liners where we currently dock they want to have those enormous you may have often been on the fast craft uh, and there's been a cruise liner tied up next to uh, to the fast craft, dwarfing the whole thing. Well, they want us out of the way so they can have cruise liners so they can get their tourists into Liverpool straight away. That's in their interest. We can't go to Birkenhead because Stenner Line have changed the size of the link span over there, and the one we used to use isn't there, so we can't go there. Anyway, that's Birkenhead. It's the other side of the river, and we want to be the Liverpool side of the river, so we are where we are. It was going to be 30-plus million. It's now close to £80 million. Let's just hope it works when we get there. I've got to say hi to um, a listener in Barcelona who dropped a note in and also to a listener from Johannesburg. We have listeners to Man in Line in Paris in the metropolitan region, in Taranga in New Zealand, and also in Greater Perth in Western Australia in the Stockholm metropolitan area, in Greater Bengaluru in India, to Reading in Berkshire and to Parma in Italy. These are all people who listen online to Man in Line and also subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't yet got into our podcasts go to manxradio.com click on podcasts we have over 85 series of podcasts including man in line including update including lots more programs if you're a podcast fan go to manxradio.com you can subscribe there and also via your favorite podcast supplier looking a little tired treat yourself to a refresh at tracy bell if you're confused by all you read or see online, Tracy Bell Aesthetic Medical can help. With the expertise of experienced medical practitioners and the latest technology, including laser skin treatment and hair removal, injectables, fat freezing and skin tightening. Call Ben on 613323 to arrange your consultation now. Tracy Bell, helping you to be better. ShopRite, shopping that's better all round. Shopping that costs less before you even start. Less travel, fuel and time. Because our stores are local to you. 
prices? ShopRite has low prices as well as price matching. And Switch and Save is something else. Sainsbury's own brand. Hundreds of items you buy every day. Famous Sainsbury's Quality Assured. Adding up to pounds less at the checkout. ShopRite. Proudly locally owned. Ramsey Garden Centre opens seven days a week for roses, shrubs, trees, perennials and an array of pond plants. Or if it's fire pits or solar lights, there's never been a better time to visit Ramsey Garden Centre. You look happy. I am. I'd worried about what could happen to my family if I die or can't work. So I've arranged a protection policy with financial options. Sounds great, but it's another monthly cost. Yes, but cover starts from as little as £5 a month. A small price to pay for financial peace of mind. You're right. Call Financial Options on 612 611 or check out financialoptions.co.im. Chase Financial Services Limited, trading as financial options, is regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Half a century on from the fatal inferno that destroyed Summerland, a series of three programmes on Manx Radio. When I saw the, the fire actually start, there was a small puff of grey smoke that came from a hut alongside of it. Why was Summerland built? A multi-million pound solarium on a small island of hills, glens and beaches. This is William Hardcastle and later in today's World at One, why did Summerland burn so fiercely and so cruelly? What happened on that August night? Well, there's fire brigade at the top now. There's another, there's another uh, fire engine coming along. Here comes the police now. And what now? Where does Manx tourism go from here? Summerland, the full story, coming soon. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Pastor Mike, good afternoon, 23 minutes before one. It's a dingy old day today, lots of fill fog, lots of mist and some rain as well. Welcome to the Isle of Man in July. Do people realise uh, that um, uh, we've had some good news? Thank you to uh, Chris providing some uh, positive feedback about the new Liverpool terminal. It makes a change from negative comments we've been hearing, says Lynn. Thank you for that. And a note in from uh, Liverpool Landing Stage. Do we actually own the land or have we made a mega investment on the lease? I think it's 990 years, uh, this is. And Charles, currently listening in Bangalore in India. All the best. Charles, home in Port a- home is Port Erin. All the best to you today. Um, and it's almost happy hour here. It's half past five, <laughs> says, says, says Charles in Bangalore. Good to hear from you. How the other half live, eh? Uh, two minutes walk. I've done it, says Paul. Serious point. With all of the high rise around the Liverpool landing stage, our little pancake of a building. Could we have made a bit more money with a couple of floors of hotel rooms above? Oh, now you tell us. Text to 094. That's what we should have been doing. Some homestay there. Can somebody from the government clarify if we have a qualified project manager representing the Isle of Man during the construction of the Liverpool landing stage? Says to Susan. I'll be honest with you, Susan. We've been asking all sorts of questions. The radio station's been asking all sorts of questions during the building of the Liverpool landing stage. We haven't been inundated with information. We wanted to know lots of questions like that as to, you know, who was building it, how far we were down the line. And it's fair to say we didn't get answers to absolutely everything. Do you realise to send the Indian rocket to the moon was £10 million cheaper than the Liverpool terminal? That's what we need, a comparison site. What we could have got with the money for the Liverpool landing stage. And uh, I'll never spend another penny on in Liverpool city centre if this is the way they've held us to ransom. It's unforgivable, says Roy. I don't think we can hold Scousers responsible for that. Yet we did our own negotiating. Presumably our negotiators knew exactly what they were doing when they walked into the room with uh, the people from the Peel Group. Uh, the new crew needs to be trained on the MES systems. It has to, again, as you said, practice docking at all ports. Um, so the average sports bike costs £25,000 and it isn't dirty, <laughs> says that correspondent. So b- bikers aren't dirty. Uh, I've uh, booked on the sailing from Belfast on Saturday night and it said um, Manxman. 
says Ben. So presumably the Manxman is uh, getting underway fairly soon. But um, the new White House presidential helicopter is reported to cost £180 million. So the Liverpool landing stage is a relative bargain, says Peter. Yes, uh, it doesn't take off, though, does it? Patrick's with us now. Hi, Patrick. Hi, David. David, just a question. Um, I've noticed over the years when a contract is drawn up, if the contract is split into smaller parts, the main contractor doesn't have to put out the tender. And I wonder whether this is going on in Liverpool at the moment because it happened at the power station. I know that for a fact. Someone, someone told me that uh, if they break a contract down, in other words, instead of uh, pricing for the whole job, you break into small parts, you don't have to put out the tender. Is that correct? Uh, well, I mean, obviously what's happening is our contract's going up in price, so we presumably got one of those contracts where uh, there was no lid on it. Yeah, it sounds that way, doesn't it, really? Mm. I mean, really, if a contract's drawn up, the, the person who is responsible for the contract, the main dealer or the main manufacturer or the main um, project manager, they should not be allowed to um, keep the contract. They should break it up as it's necessary. The trouble is, Patrick, it's a bit late now, isn't it? Yeah, that is it. So whoever, whoever supervises from this end or whether we just let, it, let them do their own thing, just get on with it, it's, it's totally wrong, really. Mm. Okay. The power, station was the, the power station was the same way. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. All right, Patrick, thanks for that. Bye now. Bye. Good to hear from you. If the Wallabies are a problem, we should offer them workshops in flute-making or wine-tasting says Victoria. We could. Now, that would bring the tourists in. Wine-tasting wallabies. While walking on the promenade yesterday, there were men pulling apart the float that was in the bay. Apparently it was bought after seeing one in the Lake District, which doesn't have tidal problems. Our tides in the bay have broken many of the parts. Waste of money? Try making it... Which promenade are we talking about? Texter 332. Thanks for your message. Uh, there's no way the work permit legislation needs to be slackened. It's like a nightmare trying to get a decent job on the Isle of Man unless you are an accountant. Says, um, or a new graduate. There, uh, there, uh, there aren't millions of jobs. They all advertise the same ones and continuously advertise roles that don't exist, says Texter 600. They just want the same type of person and won't consider anybody else. This is Eddie in Douglas. Well, this was Tim Johnston, MHK, the Enterprise Minister, yesterday said... Uh, there are hundreds of jobs. Did he say 600 jobs and 200 people out of work? So we are very short of people to get into those roles. We have a, a skill shortage on the Isle of Man. And he reckons by relaxing the work permit legislation that it will help get people into those roles. And he said it's just relaxing, not, didn't he say relaxing? We're not abolishing it and we can bring it back in if needs be. What he didn't explain was, what about if people get a job without a work permit now, does that in effect count as a work permit in the future when the legislation or when the rules are relaxed or tightened up again in the future? So if you get a, a job without a work permit under relaxed regulations, does that count as a work permit in the future? Howard's on now. Hi, Howard. Hello, Andy. Um, just that chap that was just on about the float in the, in the bay. Yeah. Uh, strange enough, I was uh, going along the promenade Sunday, and it was well and truly uh, pulled up on the beach. It was within uh, 50 yards of the railings, and there were two or three fellas working around it. But driving along, I couldn't take too much notice, and I thought, what on earth's going on here? Because it's only just been put in the water. But if that man is right, that's just been on there now saying it was designed for a quiet water area. What on earth were the council thinking about when they purchased this for a, well, what could be, uh, and lots of times it is, a rough bay? You know, you, you wonder at the mentality of the people that's running the, the systems. Um, because out in Douglas Bay, you're going to get some large waves coming in and it's tidal but uh, 
that bed, as I say, they were working around that on Sunday, so it hasn't lasted all that long. Whereabouts is it exactly? Well, it was round about where the Spectrum flats are, you know, where the old Crescent facilities used to oh, be. Oh, right, yeah. It was way up on the promenade. They'd pulled it up on where the stones are built up on the beach. And uh, it's just, I was driving along, so I uh, had to be careful what I was doing, but I saw. And I thought, what on earth's that doing up there? That's too far in for anybody to swim out to. But that obviously is what is wrong. It's um, It's gone wrong in a serious way. And Let's have the council. They they seem to di- disappear into obscurity when anything like this happens. So let's have an answer from the council. They were quick to shout that they were putting it there, but now suddenly has got egg in the face and they're all hiding behind the cupboard. Mm. Yeah, but also um, the other chap uh, that was on early in your program said about if you go to a book and the full list of the executives etc are all there, but the controversy over the Liverpool landing stage is not something that's just happened now. It's been in the planning stages and in the consultation stages and everywhere. So it's going to have to go back and whoever it was within the executive in the civil service needs to answer questions. It needs a public inquiry into this. I know it sounds drastic, but we're talking 100 million plus by the time they've finished. And you say the the lease, it's a 900. What is the lease? Is it on an annual basis? Is it going to be increased on an annual basis? A lot of people fell foul of lease um, mortgages, leasehold mortgages in the UK. Is this a similar thing where the price is going to change on an annual basis where they're going to put the ground rent up? You just wonder, Howard, whether or not the people who went out to negotiate on our on our basis, uh, on our behalf, you know, did they know what they were doing? Were they set up by their bosses? You know, were they set out, uh, sent out to negotiate with, you know, Peel Group are, you know, they're a multi-billion pound organisation. They know how to negotiate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And who did we send out there to negotiate? Were they well, set this up? Is the question. Yeah, I'm sorry, but this is the question that should be answered, asked and answered, and the politicians now and when the consultation and all the project was envisaged, they should be brought back in. They can't hide behind the fact that they're no longer with government. Two of the senior members of government um, resigned. One was the head of the uh, DOI. Uh, he he disappeared, and then was the I think it was the um, attorney general. I was no, it wasn't attorney general. It was the secretary, wasn't it? He jumped ship, and this was all before the last election. So they must have known the fan was starting to turn, and the smelly brown stuff was coming in. So the the question should be asked, and it should be on a public inquiry on a source off the island because you can't have people scratching each other's backs and covering up. This is serious money that the taxpayers are losing on. And um, Liverpool Land and Stage, I can remember that, and there was always cruise liners there, always. And you used to come up on the little uh, floating dock and you'd be straight up under the, well, <laughs> Uh, the Dockers Umbrellas used to call it, and you'd be into town, into the, the city. But this is going to become a farce. This is going to become one of the Scottish shipbuilding farces, and this is our Isle of Man version of it. Okay. So there needs to be a public inquiry by somebody off the island. This is verging on what people have been talking about proper governance of the island and we've lost that now because of the the parliament that we have okay all right howard i appreciate that take care bye now good to hear from you i'd love to know says texter 098 if the steam packet makes a profit does it make a loss if it makes a profit where does it go well it's uh, treasury owned they're the people in charge of it so presumably any 
any profits would go straight back into Treasury, into our coffers. But again, that's a question I could put to the Chief Minister. We had a long time left on our lease on the current Liverpool landing stage, says Mary. This should have been used in negotiations with Peel Holdings, who wanted to use it for cruise ships, uh, that they should bear or at least share the cost of building the new landing stage instead of just handing it over. What well, Whoever was responsible for the negotiation should be held to account. Well, yeah, thank you, Mary. I'm, I'm guessing that the government will say the government did the negotiating, but we see the point. Two of the points, uh, two of the, uh, the kind of flies in the ointment were the voids that were underneath the docks, underneath where we, uh, we want our landing stage, and also World War II ordnance. And it's not like Liverpool docks didn't get bombed in the war. So somebody should have known about the World War II ordnance. I question, says Pat, I question the 800 jobs advertised on the Isle of Man. If you look at all the agency adverts, it appears to me they're all advertising the same jobs. So there's a lot of multiple counting going on here. <laughs> and a lovely message from Duncan, who says, I've got a high and die. Uh, uh, it's a Hyundai. They insist on calling it a Hyundai. Anyway, Hyundai, I drive a Hyundai Getz. I think it's now, is it an I-10? So I suggest that anybody who drives a Hyundai, a Tucson or a Santa Fe or a Sonata, or do you remember the Hyundai Pony? Oh, what a classic. Anybody who drives a Hyundai should demand a free ticket on the steam packet. Didn't Hyundai build the ship? Hyundai owners, Hyundai drivers should get free tickets. Duncan, you can try. Have you ever thought about learning another language? Trying out something artistic? Or fancied giving guitar lessons a go? Maybe you're looking to develop new skills for your job or career. From creative arts and catering to agriculture and digital literacy. Whether you're looking for a course that's just for fun or want to upskill... University College Isle of Man offers a wide range of adult learning courses to help you meet your goals. Visit ucm.ac.im to find your next course. Do you know a scrap man? Because I've got scrap to clear. Cars in copper, brass and lead, and I need cash for beer. What? You don't know a scrap man? Castains of Foxel is the one for you. Castains will take all scrap metal and is also licensed for dry cell and lead acid batteries. So don't delay. Ring 801 337 now. So now we know a scrap man and all our scrap's been cleared. Ring 801 337. Then have cash for beer. Call cost dies today and get yourself a beer. Every drop is precious. Water. So easy to take it for granted, isn't it? Our reservoirs supply the needs of our island, but with the effects of climate change, that's becoming more challenging every year. Manx Water is the only water we have, so we need to make every drop count by using it wisely, at home, in the garden, and in general. Visit manxutilities.im to find out how you can begin smarter living to lower energy bills and reduce your impact on our island environment. I'm Mike Buttle. Tonight, as part of Manx Radio's Island Life series, I'll continue my look at the Isle of Man Steam Railway with a nostalgic journey along the old Peel Line. I'll be chatting to a few people who have great memories of the trains and of working on the line. I've travelled on the train into Peel. I was sent to buy a pitchfork. But one of the things I always remember were the flower beds in between the two sets of tracks. So a lot of the tools and a lot of the methods that they used were from the very early times of railways. That's tonight at six and available as a podcast afterwards at manxradio.com. Tickets, please. The Man in Line with Andy Witt. Hi, Julie. She said, I think it's great news that the Isle of Man has got a bid for the Island Games. The Isle of Man has submitted an official bid to host the 2029 Island Games. Um, I think 2025 is in Orkney, isn't it? And 2027 in Innesmon in Anglesey. So we're bidding for the 2029 Games to come home to the Isle of Man. And uh, then we'll be top of the medal table because the home team always gets to uh, to be top of the medal table. It's true. I'd love it. I'd love to know if the steam packet makes a loss. Yes, we've just heard from you as well. And a note in that just says um, uh, let me see here. In Germany, old railway lines 
uh, were not lifted uh, for possible future use. Now, Ramsey Station is available. Why can't we reinstate the line to Kurt Michael, says Texter557. Take the train to the wildlife park. Now the station... This is about deactivating, but not removing. Uh, if things change in the future, they can be brought back. That's it. That's what Tim Johnson said. We're deactivating. We're not uh, getting rid of work permits. That's what we're doing. Deactivating, not getting rid of. So uh, count yourself deactivated. What's going to happen then if you, if you do get that? If, if you get a job under a deactivated work permit scheme and they reactivate it, do you become deactivated? <laughs> Now, you must take care, and you must watch out. There's a rocking manhole cover loose in Balasala, Main Road Balasala. There's a road closure tonight between 6 and 9.30 on Main Road Balasala between the two roundabouts from Bridge Road to Station Road. They're repairing a rocking manhole cover. That's my favourite punk band of the 1970s, Rocking Manhole cover. I think I've got two of their albums. So watch out tonight in Balasala for that. And the Liverpool Cruise Terminal, says Paul, may never get the go-ahead due to the global downturn. Oh, that's great news, isn't it? Thanks to Ben and Chris on the phones today. Back tomorrow with an open line. W-I-N-T